Okay, so I got about a dozen emails saying, um, well, gee, how do you how do you use that xylophone xylophonia, xylophone rhythm, and improvise with that? So I figure we'll talk about that. That's uh, xylophonia by Joe Green. That was all of it. The beginning, the middle, the end. Played it so fast, you shouldn't. Yeah, it took eight seconds. No, that's the that's the figure. Um, we'll put it in C because everything was always better to talk about in C, at least on your first video here, which is this is what this is. Woo! -hoo! First video, fantastic. Great job. Keep it up. Um, it's a very strange thing, just hanging out in your kitchen with your uh, high-end camera equipment. That's my phone. Somebody call him? Um, let's take that rhythm. Eighth, sixteenth triplet. Eighth, 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 eighth. eighth. Da, 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 No. 8th, 16th triplet, 16, 16, 16. So the sticking is right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Or hammering. Malleting. And it works in, we'll call this second inversion of C. So start it with G, C, E, G. Uh, in that second inversion position because the melody or the high note stays the same. What is that? That's G, G, E, G, C, G, da. G, E, C, G, G, E, C sharp, B flat. What? That goes into C sharp diminished, fully diminished seventh. One more time, E, G, E, C sharp, B flat. And then G7, the dominant 7, 5, 7. That's G, F, D, D. And we'll use that harmonic rhythm of chord, 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 same chord. <laughs> so 1, 1, 1, 2. One, 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 two. Now Joe's brother, and probably Joe, would say if this were a lesson, they'd practice it 20 times perfectly. Do not make any mistakes, Do not keep your hammers low, all the things, but you know that already. Just read the book, you know? Actually, read it. Um, no, I'm not going to make you watch me do that. You, you, we probably stopped watching anyway. But what we can do with that is then the improvisation aspect kicks in, which is, hmm, how do we use that? And get around. Oh, that was fine. It was just fine to play that note because we're improvising, right? Yeah, sounds better as a D, not a C. Um. Hmm. So moving it around, I'll just do something here, just kind of moving it around, inverting it. to repeat the last note. Um, uh, it'll sound very um, much like an exercise. This already is exercise-y, but let's do just smooth voice leading, smooth as we can from the root position. 
C, G, E, C, and then down B flat, and then B. So. Get into instead of using just the five, also the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. because we have two beats on it you can use the next um, chord tone um, or, right what does that look like D D D B G F G B don't go B as doubling but go either down to G or back to D Or, or, <laughs> and what I do there is melodically move in that extra beat. smooth close not jumpy a lot of fancy new music is very jumpy disjunct hard on the ear this is uh, of an era where World War one had ended and people were dancing Keeping the other hand stationary. And the left hand will be off the beat. Which is important to internalize. I'm slowing down and being kind of just showing how that goes, but um, for those of you play or listen to that E, e major sonata uh, or partita uh, the left hand is actually the moving melody well at least for that <laughs> it's moving <laughs> and it's moving off the beat And it's not a samba. So. Same thing. So the point being, one, either the right or the left hand will move and the other will 
stay stationary. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Stay tuned as we will discuss uh, 